Redeemer. Alleluia and amen. Welcome, just as you are. Welcome in, welcome home. Come on in through our doors. Come in and have a seat. We saved one just for you. We are a growing church with a big heart, and we have saved a place for you. We are a learning, loving, and living family of faith, and our door is always open. Come and walk through the threshold. Come and be challenged. Come and be comforted. Come and be called home. Come in to where Jesus the Christ blesses the children and teaches the adults. Where our God blesses the adults and teaches the children. Come in through this doorway and find that the Holy Spirit dances in and among those gathered. Come and hear the music that lifts us off of our feet and lifts our hearts to God. Come and dance in the aisles. Come and wiggle your toes to the beat. Leave all that burdens you at the door or bring it all with you inside. Come with your dancing shoes on or come still and quiet. Walk through our doors boldly and loudly proclaiming that you are here or tiptoe through them silently. Bring your unfinished breakfast with you or come with a full belly or an empty one. Come on in, come in. However you come, come in, come through our doors. Doorways are important things. Doorways mark our entering into a familiar space such as this, or our journeying out towards a new thing. Doorways mark our homes, our spaces and places that we hold near and dear. And over the doorways of many homes are maybe the name of the family that lives there, or maybe a number from the street upon which you live, or a slogan or a quote that tells the one who walks through that passageway what kind of heart dwells there. These signs might read, stay a while, or bless this home, or welcome to our happy place, right? These signs mark our doorways as a title and a claim to who lives there, as a reminder to all that the importance of that space matters to the people who enter into it and that all who come in are family, offered a seat at the table. Perhaps some of you have some of these signs above doorways in your homes. In the Jewish faith, in which our own Christian faith has deep roots, it is tradition to place what is called a mezuzah along the doorways of our homes, right on the side. Mezuzah translates directly to doorpost and commonly refers to a little scroll of parchment that is rolled up and contains specific biblical verses and is put into a hard plastic container and commonly placed on the side of doorways or thresholds in the homes of our Jewish siblings. They serve as a reminder of what is valued in that home, holding specific scripture passages in the scroll. 
They mark a claim as to who lives there, sealed and attached and screwed into the door frame. They are not to be missed. A mezuzah serves as a daily reminder and a public declaration of identity and faith, who and whose they are. The mezuzah recalls the Hebrews taking exodus from Egypt during the Passover when the doorposts identified the Jewish homes that God passed over during the plague of the firstborn. You know the story. And from that day forward, the mezuzah has always identified a home as belonging to a Hebrew. Traveling throughout the world or this very country, one can often seek out the hospitality of our Jewish siblings by looking for a mezuzah on the doorpost. Maybe you've seen one before. A blessing of welcome, a reminder to live fully into one's faith, a challenge even to carry out God's word boldly into the world. And every time a person of Jewish faith walks through the doorway with a mezuzah, they touch the casing of that scroll, and then they bring their fingers to their lips as a sign to express one's love and devotion to God and remembering importance of the scripture that is within the mezuzah. Walking through doorways in a place of faith, in a sacred place, in a loving place, is a holy, holy thing. And your passing through our doorway this morning has made this a holy space even more so than it was, even as you are blessed, you are a blessing to this space. And we welcome you home every time, regular or not, stranger or not. Can you feel the spirit when you walk into this place, folks greeting one another, hugging one another? Come just as you Come in, come on in. I wonder what words might adorn our doorway right here, or perhaps out front or to the side, if we were to craft one of those wooden signs that you might find at the Hallmark store to go above the threshold. Maybe something like, the Falmouth Congregational Church welcomes you. Or perhaps, all who come in love are welcome here. Or maybe, you are home here. I know the first time I walked through those doors, you all welcomed me with open arms and open hearts, and I give thanks for that. I saw that sign above the door in my imagination, and I knew this is a place where all who come in love are welcome. Come, just as you are. And yet, and yet, even as we try our humanly hardest to open our doors physically and prayerfully, as wide as the hinges will swing. We know that sometimes the world tells us not to. We know sometimes the world tells us to be afraid and for good reason sometimes, to close our doors, to close ourselves off to those who are unlike us or those who we fear. Sometimes we come just as we are, and yet we feel doors slammed in our faces and in our hearts. Perhaps you have felt this way before. 
closed off because of who you are or how you love, because of who you voted for or what kind of car you drive, because of what you ate for breakfast, because perhaps you know the painful sting of a door closing in front of you that you were so excited to walk through. We come as we are, and we are sometimes rejected, outcast, told we are not welcome. This happens to all of us, some of us quite often. Doors slammed in our faces, doorways closed off because of our identities or who we are in the world or who we are not. It is a very raw, real, and very human experience to be excluded and closed off from entering through doorways. We know we can do better. As people of faith, we are called to do better, called as followers of Christ to welcome all into our flock, as the scripture says, into our hearts and into our lives, even when we want to close the doors, slam doors even. It is a very raw, real, and very human experience to be the one Looting and closing others off from entering through doorways. We know we can do better. In the wisdom literature of our holy scripture, which is what we heard this morning, when we read it deeply, it leaves us with curious minds and open hearts, giddy with new knowledge and experience the Song of Songs does this well, as we heard a small slice of its poetry this morning. The Song of Songs reads for us this morning and our current, is our current book in our reading through the Bible, Journey. It teaches us about love and loving unconditionally. It's a book of open doors and extra chairs at the table. The poem illustrates the need for contact with other humans. Open doors. Connections with others. Open doors. The need to welcome strangers who we do not understand. Open doors. To love and welcome other beings. Open doors. To embrace others and invite them in for an embrace. Open doors. Before we can read this poem in the Bible as being in relationship with God, which it beautifully illustrates. First, we must see it as an instruction of how to be in relationship with each other. Love one another, cherish one another, open the doors, open them wide, despite our appearances or where our stories come from despite our differences and in celebration of them. It is awesome to see the passion as something that should involve God, and it does. But we do a great disservice to ourselves and our neighbor when reading scripture like Song of Songs. If we do not first absorb it through our very pores, the idea of human-to-human -human contact. Throw open the doors and connect. Hang signs that let all who enter through those doors know that they are welcome as they are. And so maybe you will take your shoes off to be closer to the ground which is called holy to come as you are. Maybe you'll bring an art or knitting or watercolor project with you to worship, to work on, and feel like you are at home. 
Maybe you'll come with a blanket. Maybe you'll come with bug spray covered skin. Maybe you'll come with gardening, dirt covered hands. Come as you are. You need do nothing more. Maybe you will show up as your most authentic, beautiful, colorful, rainbow self, knowing that you are fully loved in this space and our doors beckon you in. Or maybe you are still working on it, still working on showing up as your best self, and I celebrate that. And I hope that you will continue to show up in this space in whatever way feels best for you, shoes or not. Maybe you'll come tears and laughter, singing and dancing, praying and hoping, working and leading, learning and teaching preaching and praying. For all of these things are what it means to come as followers of Christ, as our most honest and real selves. However that looks for you in this moment, that is okay. So open the doors. Keep them open and open them wide in your homes, in your hearts, in this very church. All are welcome here. Come, just as you are, and welcome home. Amen.